I'd like to show you a little bit on how to use the Aerotech Reload Adapter System. Basically, it's a set of parts that you're going to put into the reload casings that allows you to use short propellant sticks in the longer casings. The advantage of this is instead of buying a whole host of uh, reload casings, you can buy just two. Basically, if you buy the big one and uh, this one here, you can basically run all the different reloads in just two casings instead of buying five or six of them. Uh, but first let me tell you that um, in the 120 grain, which is this size here, there's two different cases. There's the standard 40 to 120 and then there's the high power 120. Now the reload adapter system does not work in this case and you can tell it by the funny end on the front. Um, it will only work in the cases that have the knurled ends, like this one here. So basically, I'm going to show you how to use it, um, and we're going to load it. We're going to load an H128W-M into the Aerotech RMS29360 case. Now, typically, this is a, a three-grain motor, and this is a six-grain case. So this is where we're going to use all three of the spacers. Now as you can see, there's three spacers. There's two that are the same size and then there's a longer one. Now the longer one is only used in this 360 casing. So if you're using the, the adapter system in one of the shorter casings, this would not be used. You would just set it aside. But we will be using this today. Um, you also have the uh, threaded end. And this is the forward end. And then you have what's called the um, floating, um, uh, yeah, the floating, floating forward closure. That's the floating forward closure, and that's this here. And basically, the floating, the floating floor. <laughs> say that three times fast. The floating forward closure and this uh, forward end is basically equivalent to the forward end on the standard reload case. Um, so this plus this equals this. And so you could actually take this and just put it into storage. You could, um, if, you're, if you have the adapter system, you could just keep this in storage and never use it again. Um, now also inside the 360 case, is the forward seal disc and that's this right here. Now this is dependent on what grains you're using, what propellant pack you're using. Um, we're using the H128 and if you look in the instructions it doesn't call for this. So when you're using the adapter system this will not be used. So always check the instructions on the propellant whether or not you need this. Uh, but for today we don't need this. So I'll set that aside. And again, I'm going to set the uh, forward closure aside because I don't need that either. So then at this point, we'll go ahead and start assembling the motor. Um, you have the three grains and those will go into the insulator. Um, on the delay end, we have our delay insulator and the RMS delay, RMS plus delay. This is the RMS plus. And this is a, a medium, which is 10 seconds. And if you need a different delay than that, what you'll need to do is to get the uh, Aerotech delay drilling tool, which is this here. And then with this, you can adjust this to a more precise measurement. You can take a 10 second delay and tune it down to an eight second or a six second, depending on what your flight is. And to know that, you're gonna need the RockSim software, and we covered that in other videos. And I covered on how to use this uh, delay drilling tool in another video too. So go ahead and watch that to see how that's used. Um, so I'll just go ahead and put this together real quick. This goes into here. The insulator goes on there like that. Um, into, into the forward floating closure is this uh, neoprene washer that goes in there like that. Uh, this is put in there like that and this is going to be a tight fit. And it, um, it is a tight fit. For right now, I'm just going to pull that um, washer out. I don't need that just for right now. Um, and then on this end, we'll have one of the um, 
insulators that goes on that end. There's another one that will go on this end. So we have two like that. Then you'll have the nozzle with its washer on this end. And then this washer, uh, rubber washer goes there. O-ring, I'm sorry. So let's go ahead and start putting this together. On this end I have my nozzle. I'm not going to put the uh, O-rings in for right now. Um, but when you just follow the instructions on how to put it together. So that drops in there like that. This will drop in here like this. Um, and this goes in. I will put in this big washer because that um, is required um, just so that everything doesn't rattle around. And then this will go in there like that. And at this point, this remember this goes into the forward end of that delay. So these I'm just not using for right now, but you will need them. Um, now at this point we can start putting in our spacers. Now it doesn't matter which order they go in. You can put it in the short ones first, and then the long one, or, or the long one first, then the short. It doesn't matter. So they will be inserted like that. And then finally the forward closure goes on there like that. And when you get everything together, there should be no rattling of anything inside the case. So basically this is ready to fly now. Then I would, well, I, I also didn't put in my delay and the ejection charge cap, uh, or my ejection charge and the ejection charge cap. And then this is the, uh, the thing that goes over the nozzle to hold the igniter in, and the igniter also comes with that. So that's basically how you assemble this. Um, if you have any questions, give us a call. Uh, but basically, I think you'll figure it out by watching this video. Now the 38 millimeter reload adapter system is basically identical. The only thing is you don't get an extra tall spacer uh, because it's not needed in these grains. Um, the, fo the floating forward closure um, looks a little bit different, but basically it's the, the same thing. On one end you'll put your, your delay, the other end your ejection charge, and again this ho holds it all together. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to call us at Apogee Components. We'll be able to help you out. Um, and that's it. Thank you.